everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and in the course uh, experimental biotechnology, we are dealing with the different techniques so that you can be able to utilize these techniques for tackling the different scientific problems through designing the better experiments and so on. So, in this series, today we are going to start the discussion about the chromatography. So, the chromatography is a technique which actually allows you to separate the molecules and when you have a crude mixture, you can be able to purify the molecule of your interest. So, let us discuss about the chromatography. So, chromatography was first discovered by a Russian uh, Italian botanist Mikhail Stoad and the chromatography literally means that you are writing in the color. So, as you can see what the Mikhail has performed that he has applied a small plant extract uh, onto a column and when he has resolved this uh, sample, what he could found that the sample is being resolved into the different bands of different color and that is how he has given the name as the chromatography or the color writing. The chromatography is a technique which is being used to separate the molecules, but before getting into the details of discussing the different aspects of chromatography, let us discuss what is the basic principle of separation. So, what is mean by the separation or the isolation? So, you can imagine that you have a mixture of the molecules. You can have the molecules of different colors, some are yellow in color, some are red, some are blue, some are pink and what you have to achieve is the isolation of these pink color compounds. So, that is what is called as the separation or the isolation of the compound. So, how you can achieve that? Suppose, we give you the uh, the balls of the different colors and then you ask you to separate the balls of the pink color, then what you have to do is you have to use a, uh, some, some way so that you can be able to recognize or you can be able to distinguish the pink color from the rest of the color and that is how you can be able to separate these pink color points. That is what exactly is the separation technique. The separation technique always utilizes a exclusive parameter which can be utilized or which can be exploited to uh, isolate the compounds. Now, we can take an example of the these three uh, molecules. So, these three mo chemical molecules are being present and we have taken these three compounds only to discuss the basic principle of separation. So, suppose you have the mixture of any of these three compounds, then you can be able to separate them exploiting the different physical as well as the chemical properties. What are the physical properties you can exploit? You can exploit the molecular weight, you can exploit the boiling point in case these uh, molecules are of liquids. Then you can use the freezing points, you can use the crystallization. For example, you can use, you can, you can do something so that the one compound is going to be crystallized whereas the other compound is going to be present in the uh, solution and that is how the crystallized compound can be filtered out and can be separated from the rest of the molecules. Similarly, you can actually play very nicely with the solubility as well as the density parameters. So, all these falls under the physical properties exactly the same as you can actually also play with the chemical properties. For example, you can have the different types of functional groups. For example, in this case, the phenol has a functional group whereas the aniline has the NH2 as a functional group. So, these two functional groups are very different from the benzene. So, you can actually exploit the uh, presence of functional groups and once the functional groups are different, their reactivity for one or other reagent is also going to be different. So, when you react them, so some of the molecules will react, the other molecule will not react. So, the molecule which will react to form a complex, this complex can either change the physical properties in such a way that, so that the, uh, the complex is going to be more soluble or the less soluble uh, and because of this, you can be able to 
purify the uh, the pro your desired compounds. Let us see how you, you can exploit these physical or the chemical properties for these three set of molecules. So, these three set of molecules benzene, phenol and aniline. Now, you can see that the molecular weight, the molecular weight of the benzene is 78.11 whereas, the phenol is 94.11 and the aniline is 93. So, if I have to purify the benzene and the phenol, I can actually exploit the differences between their molecular weight. Then you can also see the boiling points, the boiling point of the benzene and the phenol is different. Uh, so, that also can be utilized. So, let us see how the boiling point can be exploited to separate the two molecules using the technique called fractional distillations. So, initially what we have, we have a mixture of the benzene and the aniline. So, when you have a mixture of benzene and aniline, what you have to do is you have to keep this uh, sample in a flask and then you connect this flask to a condenser. If you all do not know the, about the condenser, condenser is a instrument which actually allows you to distill the compound. So, what happened is that the water vapors or the vapor of the compound goes into the central tubing and then the central tubing is surrounded by the water jacket. So, when the water comes, goes out and comes out, uh, it this, this tubing becomes cooled. So, when the vapor goes into this central tube, it actually get cooled and because it get cooled, it turns into the liquid phase and that is how this water vapor can be collected in the second uh, in the separate flask. Uh, so, this uh, distillation uh, apparatus can be used for distillation of different liquids or the mixture of a different liquids. So, what you have to do is you have to have a mixture of the benzene and alanine. You start heating these with the help of uh, a sprit lamp or the uh, Bunsen burner and as the temperature will go up, the benzene which is actually having the lower boiling point will have the tendency to go and remain in the vapor phase whereas, the aniline which is having the higher boiling point will remain with the liquid phase which means that the benzene will go and go with the vapor phase whereas, the aniline will remain with its own phase. So, as a result what will happen is when you go with the first round of distillations, you are going to have more and more amount of benzene in the upper flask whereas, you are going to have the aniline in the lower flask. So, if you repeat this whole exercise multiple times or if you use the fractional distillation apparatus, you could be able to separate these two molecules because they are having a very huge separation in terms of their boiling point. The benzene has a lower boiling point whereas, the aniline has the higher boiling point and because of their differences in the boiling point, uh, the benzene will evaporate faster and evaporate uh, sooner. So, that benzene will remain in the vapor phase whereas, the aniline will tend to remain in the uh, liquid phase and as a result, you will collect the aniline in the lower chamber and lower flask and whereas, the benzene you will collect in the upper flask. So, at the end of this uh, distillations, you will be able to separate the aniline from the benzene. If you can be able to distribute the molecules into the two different phases, whereas for example, in this case you have the two phases, one is the, uh, the uh, vapor phase and the other one is the, the liquid phase, this whole, this whole phenomena can be monitored or can be used to separate the molecules and it is so, the distribution coefficient which actually explains this distribution is to describe the distribution of compound 1 between the two phases A and B which means in this case the you have the distribution coefficient of benzene for vapor phase and the liquid phase whereas, you are also going to have the distribution for aniline which is different. So, in this case the phase A is going to be the vapor phase and the phase B is going to be the liquid phase. So, the KD is going to be the concentration of compound in phase A versus the compound concentration of the compound in phase B. So, as the names as the distribution coefficient is a uh, is a ratio of 
the concentration of the compound in phase A versus the phase B is actually does not have any unit and it is actually also a virtual number because as soon as you change the uh, pairs of the compounds or as soon as you change the conditions, the distribution of the molecules are also going to be different between the different phases and as a result, the, uh, the distribution coefficient always depends on the number of counter ions or number of compound which are present in the mixture and it is also a not a fixed number, it is a dynamic number which actually depends on the, what the way the compound is going to be distributed into the different planes. Now let us come to the chromatography. So, chromatography uh, the purpose of the chromatography is to separate a complex mixture into the individual component exploiting the partitioning effect. So, partitioning effect means you are distributing the molecule between the two phases which distribute the molecules into their into the different phases and because you can do the partitioning with the help of uh, during the chromatography, the partitioning can be done in two different ways and that is how the uh, chromatography can be divided into the two different types. One is called as the partition chromatography, the other one is called as the adsorption chromatography. So, in the partition chromatography, the analyte distribute bit themselves into the two phases, one is liquid stationary phase and the other one is the mobile phase. So, in the partition chromatography always occurs in a places where you have the two liquids which are not Im, um, immiscible or the two liquids which are not mixing with each other and you can put a compound and then that compound is going to distribute between the these two liquids. Which means if I have uh, two liquids and if I put a compound X, what will happen is the X will have the lower solubility in this one or it can have the higher solubility into the solvent 2. In that case what will happen is the X is going to partition between the two compounds. So, the partition chromatography always exploit the partitioning of the molecule between the two phases. In these two phases, the two phases are always being liquid. The major advantage of this chromatography is that it is simple, low cost and has a broader specificity. It is further divided into the liquid liquid chromatography or the bonded phase liquid chromatography. So, the in the liquid liquid chromatography you are actually utilizing the two different liquids of the different solubility and the compounds are going to be partitioned between the two liquids. For example, if I can take the mixture of hexane and water. So, suppose I my, I, I my compound is hydrophobic and it is not soluble in water, then what I can do is I can just simply add the hexane, mix it into the uh, very vigorously. So, in that process what will happen is the compound will going to partition between the aqueous phase as well as the hexane phase and the sum of my compound which is actually more soluble in hexane phase will transfer from the aqueous phase into the hexane phase. On the other hand, the compound which are more polar in nature probably will remain in the aqueous phase and that is how you can actually be able to separate the molecules utilizing the, uh, the uh, different partitioning and that you can do in the liquid liquid chromatography. Whereas, in the bonded phase liquid chromatography, you have the liquid layer which is actually being adsorbed onto a solid support and then the molecules are being partitioned between the liquid which is bonded onto a support versus the liquid as a mobile phase. The classical example of the liquid liquid or the partition chromatography is the gas liquid chromatography, thin layer chromatography and the paper chromatography. In all these three cases, some places you are using the liquid liquid partition chromatography and some places you are using the bonded phase liquid chromatography. Now, the second way in which you can actually the partition the molecule is called as the adsorption chromatography. In this form of the chromatography, the matrix molecule has the ability to hold the analyte on their surface through a mutual interaction 
due to the different types of the forces such as the hydrogen binding, electrostatic interactions, van der Waal etc. So, in this adsorption chromatography what you are doing is you have the small beads on which you have the functional groups. These functional group may facilitate the different types of the forces. For example, you they can have the hydrogen bonding, they can do the van der Waal interactions or they can have the electrostatic interaction or they can have the hydrophobic interactions with the groups present on to the protein. And as a result, the molecules are going to be adsorbed onto these groups. So, molecules are present in free flowing into the mobile phase whereas, the molecules are also being adsorbed onto these beads and then ultimately these molecules are going to be removed when you do, when you do the washing and the subsequent steps whereas, these adsorbed molecule can be removed from the column using the different types of elution techniques. And that is how the adsorption chromatography is very much different from the partition chromatography. So, the partition chromatography is simple, low cost and it is broad specificity means the partition chromatography is not very much towards the specific molecules whereas, the adsorption chromatography can be can be modified or can be adjusted in such a way that it should be it, it is going to be even for the specific molecule. So, it actually provides the specificity, it becomes uh, the user friendly and it is more convenient to perform compared to the partition chromatography. The classical examples of the uh, adsorption chromatography is ion exchange chromatography, hydrophobic interaction chromatography and the affinity chromatography. Irrespective of whether you do the partition chromatography or the adsorption chromatography, the princ basic principle of the chromatography remains the same that you are actually distributing the molecule between the two different phases. So, the distribution in the case of chromatography is also been defined by the same formula that is the concentration of the molecule in phase A versus the concentration of the molecule in the phase B. In the case of column chromatography, it is well understood that the phase A is always been the stationary phase or the matrix whereas, the phase B is a mobile phase or the buffer. So, in the case of other cases, the distribution coefficient can have the multiple phases, can have any phase in the uh, in the phase A or phase B, but in the case of column chromatography for the purpose of convenience, uh, we always keep the stationary phase as the phase A and we keep the mobile phase as the phase B to calculate the KD values. Now, let us see how the molecules are being separated when they are being subjected to a chromatography. So, we have taken a mixture of the compound and we would like to understand how the KD is being used in a column chromatography to separate the two molecules. So, we have taken an example of a molecule which is called X and Y and the KD value of the X is 1 whereas, the KD value of Y is 9. Okay. If the KD value is 1, which means if every ml of the mobile phase, the molecule is going to be distributed evenly between the stationary phase as well as the mobile phase. Which means if I have the x and y, if I loaded the x and y mixture onto the column, as the molecule will run to the column, it will actually going to distribute between the matrix as the and the mobile phase and because the x has the KD value of 1, it is actually going to distribute always in terms of 1 is to 1 which means if I pass through the 1 ml of the buffer, the x is going to distribute 50-50 between the matrix as well as the stationary phase whereas, the y is going to be distributed in terms of 1 is to 9 which means the y is going to be remain with the stationary phase whereas, the x will also go, will, is going to remain with the mobile phase. So, 
as the sample will run through the column with the water as a mobile phase, as they will travel, the x and y will partition between the stationary phase and the mobile phase. As there is a huge difference in KD values, the y will always be associated with the matrix or the stationary phase and remain on top of the column whereas the x will move along the water phase because as you can see that the x has a lower kd value so it will always going to be partitioned and it, that partition will going to be keep distributing it towards the mobile phase at the end of the chromatography x will come out first whereas the y will come out at the end so this is the x molecule and this is the y molecule and because they have the very wide separation or wide difference in, in terms of the KD values, the Y is going to be separated from the X and that is how you can actually exploit the distribution of the two molecule based on the distribution coefficient. Now, once you monitor the elution of these molecules from the column, you can use the any par parameter to monitor for example you can monitor it simply by taking the absorbance so what you will see what you will see is that you will see a pattern in terms of the multiple peaks okay and what you can see in this uh, and this pattern where you are going to see the pattern of elution with multiple peak is called as the chromatogram so, the plot of elution volume along with the absorbance or any other parameter is known as the chromatogram. So, on the y axis you will put the detector signal which means it could be absorbance, it could be fluorescence, it could be uh, refractive index and so on and on the other hand on this side you are actually going to put the elution volume or the er elution time and this pattern is known as the chromatogram. So, in the chromatogram what you can see is that you have the four peaks A peak, B peak, C peak and the D peak. So, A and B are the two separate peaks which means the column is good enough to separate the A from the B whereas the C and D are actually are the fused peaks and how the C and D are fused peak because the C is eluting like this whereas the D is eluting like this which means they are actually sharing a broad base and because their base is broad they are interacting with each other and as a result they are actually being eluted as the fused peaks and why it is happening so it is happening because this column is good enough to separate the A and B but it is not good enough to separate the C and D which means the column has the lesser ability to separate the peak C and D and the ability of a column to separate the two peaks and give you the two molecule in two separate peak is known as the resolution. So, what is mean by the resolution? The ability of a chromatographic column to separate the two analyte peak from one another is known as the resolution which means in the earlier figure the A and B the, the column is separating the peak A and peak B and that is called as the resolution and it is defined as the ratio of difference in the retention time between the two peaks and the average of the base of the peak width which means the resolution is directly proportional to the difference of the uh, retention time between the two peaks and it is the inversely proportional to the average of the base of the peak width. So, when you have the resolution of 1 which means the retention time and the, uh, the average width of the peak is going to be equal, the separation of the two peak is going to be performed with an efficiency of 97.7%. But if you have the resolution which is more than 1.5, it will actually going to give you the separation of the two molecules by more than 99 percent. The number of distribution event govern the ability of a column to separate the two analyte. In another words, resolution is directly proportional to the number of distribution events 
In column chromatography, each thin layer of the column matrix participate in distribution of the molecules. So, you can assume that the height of a distribution plane is h which means the beads what you are using has a diameter of the h and the length of the column what you are taking is l. If that is the case, the number of distribution plane is going to be equivalent to the length divided by the diameter of the individual beads which means those many number of beads are going to be present in the column and the n is the if the directly proportional to the 16 trw by whole square or n is directly proportional to the 5.54 tr by w average whole square let's see how the distribution plane are going to improve the resolution of a column. So, number of distribution plane in a column is controlling two parameters. Number of distribution as the number of distribution plane will go up, it will allow the analyte to travel for longer period of time. Consequently, it will increase the distance between the two peak which means as the distribution plane will go up or as the number of distribution plane will go up the, the length or the distance between the two peak is going to be more and more which means the delta t is going to be on a larger scale. And if you remember the r is directly proportional to delta t. On the other hand as the number of distribution plane will go up it will reduce the width of the base of the peak as it results the into the peak of the more sharp peaks. You can take the example, imagine that I have packed the column with the varying number of distribution planes. So, if I have a distribution plane of n equal to 10, I am going to see a peak width with the base of this much. Whereas, if I increase the number by n by equal to 100, I am going to reduce the base and it is going to give me the shrink base. And if I increase the distribution planes further up, which means if I increase the distribution plane by another 10 times, I am going to see a sharp peak with a very, very reduced base. So, that actually proves that as you increase the distribution plane, you are actually going to reduce the average peak width of the base. And that actually is going to in, uh, re increase the resolution because the R is inversely proportional to the uh, w average. Uh, so, as the number of number is of the triple plane is increasing, the pit is increasing. Hence, the number of distribution plane is indirect way to measure the column efficiency. Higher the number is desirable for better separation. Now, if you would like to perform the chromatography, you can utilize a a chromatography system and in a typical chromatography system you are going to have the multiple component. Let us see what are these components. So, you can have the reservoirs, the reservoirs you can have one or two reservoirs where you are going to keep the mobile phase, the buffers. In some cases even you can have the four reservoirs so that you can be able to perform or you can be able to prepare the gradients between the two buffers. Then next to the reservoir you are going to have the pumps depending on the type of chromatography system you can have the one pump or the two pump and they can individually be connected to the individual reservoirs so that you can be able to utilize the different pumps to, uh, puff, to, to produce the uh, pre very precise gradients. Depending on the pressure level, you can be able to utilize the pumps which are made up of, of glass or which are made up of, of steel. Then next to the pump, you have the mixture. So, the mixture is the place where you are going to mix the liquids which are coming from the individual reservoir so that you can have the homogeneous mixed buffer and that actually will go into the uh, column and column is made up of a glass or the steel depending on the pressure limit. In most of the uh, low pressure or the middle pressure uh, chromatography system you can you can be able to attach the glass columns, but when you go to the high pressure columns you have to use the column which is made up of, of steel. 
Next to the next to the column, you are going to have the detectors. Detector is uh, something which actually detects the uh, the analytes which are coming out from the column. The detector could be or uh, utilize the multiple parameters. Detector could utilize the UV visible spectroscope, UV visible absorbance. The U detector could utilize the fluorescence. The detector could utilize the refractive index, or detector can utilize many other parameters. Like you can even attach the mass spectrometry to the as a detector, and then in that case, the chromatography system will ret uh, will turn into the liquid. LCMS or liquid chromatography mass spectrometry system. So, the detector could be of depending on what kind of molecule you are analyzing, you can actually choose the detector and that actually is going to do the online monitoring system to test the presence of the particular analyze based on the different type of properties. There are different types of detectors uh, such as UV visible detector, uh, fluorescence detectors or RI detector and all that. Once you detect the molecule using the detector, because detector is going to give you the pattern or detector is actually going to give you the chromatogram, you can actually ask the machine to collect the peaks and that you will do in the fraction collectors and the fraction collectors will collect these uh, eluting molecules into the different fractions and once and on the other hand detector will also give the signal to the recorder and the recorder is going to show you the profile of these eluting molecules in the form of a chromatogram. So, this is all about the brief overview of the chromatography system. Let us see how a real chromatography system look like. A real uh, chromatography system for example, in this case we are showing the Acta Pure M. So, the Acta Pure M has the um, uh, different components like you have the reservoirs. So, you can have the reservoirs. Then you have the columns. So, next to the reservoir, you have the pump. So, in the Acta Pure M, you have the two different pumps, two, uh, and you can see that you have the four reservoirs. Then you have the mixer. So, you have the mixer. Then you have the column. So, in this case, you will see uh, it has a, in the picture, we, we are showing a high trap, uh, high resolution columns. Then you have, in this place, you have a detector and Next to the detector, whatever is coming out can be collected in the form of a different fractions or you can actually uh, be able to utilize a computer with the interface to the system to visualize what is uh, uh, visualize the, uh, uh, the profile of the uh, eluting molecules in the form of a chromatogram. So, this is all about the chromatography system. So, when you would like to utilize the chromatography to purify the molecule, you have to design a strategy and a strategy will let you to purify or isolate the protein of your interest. And when you would like to de design a strategy, you have to consider the many parameters. So, when you want to do a protein purification strategy, so suppose you are working with the mammalian cells, as soon as you break open the mammalian cells, you are going to get the cell lysate and once you are getting the cell lysate and you would like to isolate the protein like actin. Now, if I have to purify the actin, I have to should know, I should know the protein sequence, I should know the biophysical and biochemical properties. I should know how the other people have purified the actin in the previous research articles. And then I should also know what are the affinity tag or the biological affinity of the actin towards a particular matrix so that I can utilize that particular matrix in the adsorption chromatography. And lastly, I should also know what kind of protection level is our requirement. So, if I have a requirement of milligram level or if I have a requirement of simply to isolate the actin for immunization purpose and so on, depending on what kind of uh, what kind of the production level you want, you have to define the strategy because if you are looking for the protein in milligrams or gram level, then you have to devise a strategy where you should preserve each and every losses because when you perform the chromatography technique, you are going to lose the molecules or you are going to lose the sample because some of the fractions you have to discard when they do not have the uh, essential or enough proteins of enough quality. Okay? So, in this 
uh, module, we are going to discuss about the different chromatography techniques, how these chromatography techniques can be utilized to, ex, uh, to purify the proteins and on the other hand, we also going to discuss how you can uh, utilize these chromatography to, uh, uh, techniques to answer your uh, uh, specific experimental uh, uh, experimental or the scientific questions. So, with this I would like to conclude our lecture here. In the subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss more about the different chromatography techniques. Thank you. Thank you.